Hey, showtime! Look at that. I had to push the button. Did you see me push the button? I think I did push the button. I don't know. I had to double check my microphone was on because I don't want to talk about it the other day. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. All right. Yes, but we are here. We are live. I am Fred. I'm the bald guy, right? That's me. That's me. And it's Epic Failure Day. Thursdays, I like to talk about an epic failure that happened in my life that maybe, maybe you can, you can laugh at. Sure, it's fine because I look back at it now and it's funny. Or you can learn something from it. Hopefully you can. I certainly did. And I'm going to share that with you today. So buckle up, people. This is going to be one fabulous day. I don't I hope so. Roll it. Howdy ho, once again, uh, do me a favor, if you're watching this live, pop something in the comment over there so that I know my microphone is working. In case you don't know who I am, I am uh, Fred Moore. I am, that's right, keynote speaker, entertainer, and bald guy, but not my face anymore. I don't know why. My face is Ever since this whole corona thing started, right, people are like, I'm not shaving because I'm not working or anything like that, so that's... I'm just doing what everyone else does, right? I'm not going to shave. I'm going to, and I'm growing it in, and I'm, I'm kind of liking it. Yeah, my wife likes it. My kids like it. My mom likes it. My brother, people like it. Like, hey, the beard looks good there, you know? So basically, I guess all these years, I should have been hiding, hiding my face. <laughs> hiding my face. There you go. Oh, my government's working. Good. Thank you, John. Thanks. He's what? It's my brother. It's my brother. Yeah, he's watching this from all the way in the other room. Yeah, I know. It's... We're family. We're hunkered down. So, facing epic failure. Here's the thing. Failure, to me, is a beautiful thing. I love failure. I should love it because I'm pretty good at it. I've done a lot of it. Now, most people don't like to admit that, right? They're like, oh, I don't want to fail. I don't, I don't want people to see me. I don't want to tell people about my failure. Guess what? I don't care. Because I learned a long time ago that there is no such thing as failure. 1994, August 24th, was the last day I ever failed. What? You must be stupendous, Fred. Well, thanks. I appreciate you saying that, but not really. No, that's actually the day that I learned. As long as I get a result, then I haven't really failed, have I? No. I, mean, I didn't get the result that I wanted, but that's fine. As long as I learned something from it and continue trying but change the actions that I'm using, then hopefully I'll be able to get to my goal or I'll just keep on learning what works and what doesn't work, right? So today's epic failure has to do with something that happened. It was last century that happened to me. Last century, I was 24 years old. That was 26, 28, 20. I can't do the math, I'm too old anymore. It happened up in Ohio where I grew up. I worked at this theme park called Geauga Lake Theme Park. It's closed down now. I had nothing to do with it, Tim Scarborough. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. I don't even know who's watching. But uh, it was a theme park. I did a magic show there because before I started this whole speaking, I was an entertainer. did magic and comedy all over the world, actually. Uh, at that theme park, was I met some people, and we, you know, we put the show together, became good friends and all that. Well... Right around that time, Disney was doing a big audition tour around the United States because they were just about to open up the new park that they had. Back in 19-something, blah, 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 uh, it was 88, 89, something like that, that they opened up. Uh, then it was called Disney MGM Studios. Right now it's called Hollywood Studios because they kicked out MGM. Said, we don't need you. Ha, ha. But back then, they were going to open up that park, and they were also going to open up this place called Pleasure Island. Now, the first thought that popped in my head, what kind of place is Disney opening up? They're really branching out on this whole thing. No, it's not that kind. It was a nightclub place. It was a, an island of a bunch of, like, six or seven different nightclubs. And the idea was you pay one admission, and you'd get into the island, and you could go to any of these clubs. Really cool concept. Really cool place. It was there for years and years and years. I don't know if it was ever successful because, you know, when people want to go to Disney and go to the Magic Kingdom with their families, the first thing they think of, let's go party. Yeah, you know, all right. But it was a cool place. So they were doing this audition tour for the studios and for Pleasure 
Island. Because what they were doing is uh, one of the clubs in Pleasure Island, the Adventurers Club, they had these character actors. I don't know why I did that, because they were actors. Who would interact with people and they'd do skits and they'd do improv and be funny and, you know, just, and there were these characters, they were adventurers and things like that. So that was one of the parts that I went out for. So me and all my friends, we heard about this, they were coming to Cleveland, because Cleveland's the entertainment capital of the world. Hey, I came from Cleveland, what's wrong with that? They came there and it was like, all right, they're doing this audition, we're like, all right, cool, we're going to go in, we're going to audition and then see what happens. And the deal was, you would audition one day, and if you got a callback, you would come back the next day and do something. Ah, that's how auditions work if you don't know. Typically, they kind of see a whole bunch of people, they pick the ones they think, and hey, maybe they'll work, they do a callback, they do something else, and then the process moves on. Great. I go in, I do my audition, I get a callback. <gasps> my friends, they get a callback. Hey, we're a talented group of people, aren't we? I don't know. We just... They needed people, they needed bodies. So we did our audition, we made, did the callback, went back there the next day and asked a bunch of questions. They measured me for costumes and they were like, uh, would you consider dyeing your hair? I know, what, what hair? I had hair back then. I had, I had, I had long hair, actually. That was the, the two questions there. Would you consider cutting your hair? And would you, would you consider dyeing your hair? And I said, yes to both. Because, uh, hey, it's working for Disney, right? Never been to Disney World. I was in, I've been to Florida, but not Orlando. Just, you know, Disney, right? The big cheese, literally. Mickey Mouse, the big cheese. I said, absolutely, whatever you want. So, now what they said, and we, we did the audition, we did the callback, and they said, all right, one of two things are going to happen. Either you're going to get a phone call saying, we want you, or you're going to get a letter in the mail saying, thanks, but no thanks. Now, they didn't put it that way, of course, they were nice about it, but that was basically the gist of it. So, we waited. This was, I think, October, November when they did the audition, and they were still hitting like three or four other cities, so they still had a, while, a ways to go, but they said probably around beginning of January or so, we'll start to hear one way or the other. And I said, you're going to hear one way or the other. Everyone who just did the audition and didn't do the callbacks, they're... You know, you didn't get a call back, that's it, you're done. So we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and of course, I'm hearing from my friends, we're calling, did you hear anything? I hear from all my friends. They got letters. Okay, they got letters. I was in the same audition, I haven't gotten a letter. That's a good thing, right? But I haven't got a phone call either. But that's all right. You know, maybe they're still doing, going through the process. They, they were kind of, you know, going through, weeding out the people they, they knew for sure they didn't want and then kind of culling the rest of the list, right? So I was still in the running. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and weeks go by and weeks go by. And I didn't have a phone number for, to, to call anybody or anything like that. I, like, I didn't know. Meanwhile, all this time in my head, I'm thinking, oh, well, you know what? What's Florida, right? Orlando, Florida, that... That would be great to move there. I live in Ohio. It's really cold right now. Florida, not so much. Oh, that would be good. There's lots of opportunities down in Orlando, right, for entertainers. I mean, Universal Studios was just opening up as well. So they had this new park, they had Pleasure Island, they had Universal Studios, SeaWorld was already here. The rest of the uh, Magic Kingdom and all that good stuff was there. And, and it was like there was opportunities, right? Maybe cruise ships. It was close to Miami and Cocoa Beach and Tampa. And so in my head, I'm thinking, all right, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe this is, this is going to be awesome, right? Oh, I'm going to move to Florida. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a gig down there at Disney. This will be awesome. This will be awesome. And I'm still waiting. And I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. And I'm thinking, all right, I, I got to get a hold of somebody because it's like middle of February now, right? And the contracts were supposed to start like in May, middle of February. Still haven't heard. So finally, I, I call the Disney number, eh? Would you like reserve? No, I want to talk to somebody. And oh, okay, you need to talk. And and and, and I go through six or seven different people. Finally, I get a hold of somebody. I get a hold of somebody that that's their department. They were one of the people that were in that whole audition thing. And I explain my situation. And he goes, oh, "What's your name?" And he goes, dee, 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 dee. "I heard the clicking, clicking, click." Dee, 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 dee. Didn't you get a letter? You should have gotten a letter. Wah wah. Yeah, 
I didn't get a letter. I was supposed to get a letter saying, thanks, but no thanks. And it's like, oh, okay. Eh. Big balloon, little nozzle. Oh, whoa. Yeah, it was not, uh, it's not great news, to say the least. But I have to give myself credit. I mean, I was 24, 25 maybe at the time. And I didn't really let it depress me or, or get me down. That was long before I started reading all these self-help books about mental attitude, mindset, and all that stuff. It, because if you think about it, show business is a very rejection-filled business. It's constant no, 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 we don't like you. But at the moment, I thought, well, okay, well, I'm not going to work at Disney, but what's keeping me from moving to Florida anyway, right? I mean, I was single at the time. My family was in Ohio, but the opportunity I was looking for wasn't in Ohio. At least, I didn't think it was. And I thought, you know what? Why not? Why not move to Florida? Why not move to Florida and try this. I mean, if I'm going to do this, let's do this, okay? I, I've been making a living doing magic at the theme parks, but then in the winter months when the theme park was closed, because it's Ohio and it gets cold up there, and the theme park's actually closed because of the weather, not because of viruses. But they would close during the winter time, so that means uh, I was out of a job. I was working at Denny's, waiting tables, third shift, 11 o'clock at night till 7 in the morning. So the thought of moving to Florida seemed like a really good idea at the time. And it was a great idea. I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it. Might as well do it, right? Might as well just pack up and go, right? I knew a couple of people down there, but I didn't know a whole lot of people. So I made plans. I told everyone, all right, great. I, I had some money in the bank. I had probably $2,000 in the bank maybe and a car that I was making payments on and credit card bill and just lots lots of things I probably should have spent that two thousand dollars on but I didn't I didn't shame on you and I just thought all right I'm gonna do it and the day before literally literally the day before I was going to leave I get a phone call from the production company at that theme park in Ohio Geauga Lake all right I'd worked for that production company for the last couple of years I worked Geauga Lake for two years and another like or another another lake, another uh, park called Darien Lake. So for three years, I worked for this company, uh, and they called me up and said, "Hey, y y you said you were leaving town, right? Have you left town?" I said, "No, no," because they called me at home this long before cell phones. And it's like, "Well, we hired a magician for this summer, and he started like three weeks ago, but he lives in Pennsylvania, and he's driving in." on the weekends, they were only open the weekends at that point, and driving back and forth, and he was going to be there, and he's married, and his wife doesn't like it, and she made him quit. So now we don't have a magician. What are you doing? And I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm about to move to Florida, but you know what? If I take this gig, I'll have another summer of doing shows and make some money, and be able to put it in the bank and have a little bit of extra money for when I moved to Florida, right? Maybe that would have been the smart thing to do, but it wasn't the right thing to do in my mind. See, I just worked three summers doing shows. And if you know anything about theme parks, I was doing five shows a day, six on the weekends, six days a week. It's like 32 shows a week for four months. 500 shows, roughly, right? There were 20-minute shows, me and an assistant. 500 shows. Well, after that third summer of doing that, I mean, I was, I was burnt out. I was burnt out at that point, and I, was, I, was, I wasn't really doing much magic at that point. I was just like, ha, I just, you know. So in my mind, I'm going, well, wait a minute. No, I, I don't want to do that, because I'm going to get even more burned out. I'm going to start hating my job, and I love my job. I never want to hate my job. I mean, I love what I do. And I, I knew that, well, if I did that, yeah, it would, I would get even more burned out, right? And in my head, I'm thinking, well, I've done that. Right, when I was younger, when I was 16 years old, I went to that park and I saw a magician and I thought, wow, man, 
And that was right when I was getting into magic. I thought, man, that, if I could just do that, that would be awesome. If I could be a magician in a theme park, then yeah, I would rock and roll. But once I got to that point, I'd done that, right? There was no need to do it again. Right? I'm not going to do the same thing over and over and over. I'm going to do it for a few years. Yeah, but, you know, let's move on. Let's move up. So I told him, I said, you know what? I, I really love to help you out, but moving to Florida, I decided that's, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I did. Packed up the car, moved down to Florida, and starved. <laughs> Just, yeah, I got a job. I worked at Denny's. I worked at Olive Garden. I worked at Disney for a day, and then I left. I went back to the... Well, you just, it took me a while to get my, my feet firmly planted on the ground and kind of get back into it. But that audition, I thought, was going to change my life. And then they rejected me and said, no, you should have gotten a letter. That, to some people, would be an epic failure, right? At that point, some people would be like, well, I didn't get it, okay. But at that point, I'm thinking, you know what, no, no, this is not failure right here. This is a result. Okay, I auditioned for that. I didn't get it, but it put the idea to move to Florida in my mind. And since I've moved to Florida, I've worked on those cruise ships. I've worked at Disney. I've worked at Universal. I've traveled the world. I've done over 6,000 performances in 30 countries. Because of that stepping stone of coming to Florida, I know it has led me on the path that I'm on right now, the path that led me to Japan, where I met my wife. What? Is she Japanese? No, she's Romanian. I know. That's another story. That's another story. Actually, that is another story of an epic failure. <laughs> Honey, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I'll save that for later. So I learned. I learned that just because what I want to have happen doesn't happen, that doesn't mean it's the end of the road. All right? I, I had that in my head. Well, okay, th that didn't happen. What now? What now? What's prevent me from moving to Florida? Right? Nothing did. It's kept that little negative thought in my head going, oh, are you sure you want to do that? And I told that negative, I thought, shut up, get out, I'm done with you. All right, cool. You know what? I thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you here. My name, of course, is Fred Moore. That's me, at that little logo up there. And that, that's my book over there, and that's it over there, you know. If you like this, share it with your friends. If you're watching this on the replay, give me some likes. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, Hit me up, because how, 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 how are you watching this on YouTube? I haven't put this on. Have I put this on YouTube? Oh, it's going to go? Oh, that's awesome. All right. Take care, guys. Enjoy, and uh, I'll, see you. I'll see you next Tuesday, I hope, for uh, another one of my things. Not the failure thing, but something else, and I'll tell you the story of what happened last Tuesday when it didn't happen. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.